Good afternoon and welcome to live coverage of the Women's Super League. Reading taking on Arsenal at Adams Park in Buckinghamshire. Two teams have had a bit of a dip in form lately. They've lost two of their last three. Arsenal reeling from the last round of matches, which saw them knocked off the top spot for the first time this season. Reds against Blue in a London derby that matters even more than normal today. Converts! Chelsea lead! Converts! And the champions are in a commanding position here now. After that win for Chelsea, City can go top. City are top of the WSL. So that result means this has become an enormous fixture for Arsenal, who are facing a few of their former teammates, particularly Farrah Williams. We'll be hoping once again to try and spoil the party against her former club. And Arsenal, the teams coming off the bus are once again depleted in their numbers. A few younger faces will feature this afternoon against this Reading side, but still very much in high spirits. So here is the Women's Super League table ahead of today's fixtures. And as you can see at the top, it is hotting up. Manchester City top by a point, but Arsenal have that precious game in hand and Chelsea are on the march. Suddenly the team in form, seven WSL matches on the bounce, and the Hayes side have won. And here are the women's Super League fixtures that are taking place. Game week 15, Reading against Arsenal, the 12.30 kickoff, a tasty tie between Chelsea and Birmingham. And on Monday night, it's Liverpool versus West Ham. So just a few minutes away from kickoff here, Jane Ludlow, the Wales manager with me for commentary this afternoon. And we have picked out a couple of players to highlight ahead of kickoff. Katie McCabe for Arsenal, Jane, an interesting one. Yeah, great young player, obviously Republic of Ireland captain um, at a very young age. She's very versatile. Uh, her club form has shown that, you know, she's played multiple positions for them this year, midfield, backline forward line and she's done very well in all positions so so a really good young player coming through at the club right now and uh, have a look at the form guide here for both teams very similar both sides suffering uh, defeats two defeats in the last three games Arsenal of course against Manchester City and Chelsea last time out and Reading winless in their last three in the WSL so Katie McCabe, one to watch for Arsenal. And some friends reunited there. Danielle van der Donk for Arsenal, who mercifully is on the bench today, talking to Farrah Williams, who once again will be key for Reading. Yeah, unfortunate for Arsenal again. They're missing quite a few of the uh, the regular players who have managed to you know step on the pitch over the last few weeks for them. And it's kind of the tale of this season so far. Losing players at important times was well, always an important time. You know they won their best players on the pitch. But um, yeah, Van der Donk obviously a massive influence on their team. And missing her today could could give Reading an opportunity to pick up points in this league. So Arsenal continue to be depleted on the pitch and also in the dugout today. Joe Montemuro hasn't travelled because he's sick. So in his place, let's hear from the assistant coach, Aaron Dantino. Yeah, he's uh, sick. He's got the flu. So, uh, yeah, just start off at the start of the week. Didn't feel great and yeah. didn't pull up well for, uh, for today. So, yeah, he's at home resting and I know he'll be watching, but, yeah, just a bit sick. We've had a big break, um, but a good break for us to work on stuff. Um, we've had a couple of friendlies in that break to, to put that stuff into practice, and we've had a good build into this game. So, yeah, we're definitely ready for it, and it's just a case now we've got to go and deliver that on the pitch today. Yeah, the, the, the wins and losses are part of 
football. So uh, for us, it's just business as usual. The processes have been the same, nothing's changed. So uh, yeah, another opportunity against strong opposition to, to prove our worth and keep building forth for the uh, back end of the season. I think it was a case of we we adapted the way that we played and I don't think that suited us the last time that we, we played against Arsenal. So um, for us, it's a case of we need to go out there and do what we're good at. Um, make sure we're relentless in doing that and um, really taking the game to Arsenal today. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I was watching the game back last night and it was, from that perspective, I think it was probably our best our home performance of the season. Um, and yeah, for, for us, this is a great opportunity, like I said, to, to get back to winning ways. But more importantly, we need to do that by just doing the simple things well. We did that last time at home against them and the result was favourable. So we're looking for much of the same today picturesque setting for this women's Super League game in the heart of Buckinghamshire, Adams Park, the home of League One side Wickham Wanderers. And not a bad crowd gathering, a very crisp winter day in Buckinghamshire. Reading taking on Arsenal. We'll get to Kelly Chambers in just a moment, Jane, someone you know very, very well indeed. But Aaron Dantino will be the main man in the dugout today. Joe Montemiro not even here. I'm sure they would have had detailed conversations beforehand, but how much can that affect, do you think, things on and off the pitch? Oh, well, look, it could go, could go either way. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not on site with the guys when they train day in, day out, but I'm sure both men are involved in the training environment, involved with, with you know, communicating with players effectively day in, day out. So I'm sure for, for the players in the team today, it's not going to make a huge difference. Obviously, having the manager on the side of the pitch does have a massive influence at times when you need instruction, but I'm sure he has every confidence in his uh, assistant coach to be able to do the job for him today. And with uh, Kelly Chambers, they've obviously been on a pretty desperate run of form. Reading in all competitions, no win in five. And they also haven't played for an, an awful long time. Their last game was on the 9th of January. We heard from Kelly there. They've had a couple of friendlies, but difficult, isn't it? After such a long break, and a lot of these Reading players wouldn't have got on a camp or international duty. Yeah, look, for Red, and Ke Kelly will, will s sit there right now and be really disappointed with how they performed when in the reverse fixture earlier in the season. You know, it was a shock to them, I'm sure it was. Uh, Arsenal were particularly well, you know, played particularly well that day. Reading were the opposite, you know, they got exposed really easily in wide areas of the park particularly. So I'm sure she she, she will, will change something in their system today to ensure that, that doesn't happen again. Um, I'm really intrigued to see how both teams set up because obviously in game one, it worked really effectively for Arsenal, but the opposite for Reading. So have either team changed? We'll see you now in the next few minutes. Well, it's a huge game, especially from an Arsenal perspective. Just one point behind Manchester City with a game in hand, but any sort of slip up will hand City the initiative and will give them a huge boost ahead of their game, which kicks off at two o'clock at home against Brighton. So let's go through the two teams for you this afternoon. We'll start with the home side, Reading, who are winless in their last five in all competitions. They make one change from the side that lost to Birmingham in their last Women's Super League game. Captain Kirsty Pierce drops to the bench, and so Molly Bartrip comes in in her place at centre-half. New signing Raquel Honudotia of Iceland is named among the substitutes and is fit and ready to make her debut off the bench. As for Arsenal, three changes. Their injury problems, though, continue. Leah Volti and Lisa Evans both absent today with knee ligament injuries. There's a first start for Katrin Weyer. Emma Mitchell comes in along with 17-year-old Ava Kaiken, who makes her first WSL start for Arsenal. Daniel van der Donk is fit enough for a place on the bench, which includes teenagers Hannah Dorban and Melissa Phyllis for the first time. So Aaron Dantino will be the man in the dugout, already furiously taking notes, perhaps on the huddle. He's not happy with that, well, but something he can uh, talk to them about at half-time. But it's a really huge game, and also for Kelly Chambers, as you mentioned, Jane, they were embarrassed in the reverse fixture, and she was so disappointed with the way Reading, as you say, were exposed 6-0 
that was when Arsenal were at their rampant best. So she'll be determined to put in at least a better display. Yeah, I think this is a key game for both teams for different reasons. You know, uh, Kelly Chambers and Redding are keen to, to finish in the top four place again uh, and keep growing and keep developing as a team every year. With Arsenal, obviously, they're vying for the championship. So both teams right now want, want to win this game. Just a couple more points on the latest Arsenal injury. So Lisa Evans has a knee ligament injury following a tackle against Chelsea. And she didn't join up with the Scotland national team. She stayed for rehab at London Colney. She's estimated that she'll be out for up to six weeks, Lisa Evans. Leah Valti, who has started every single Women's Super League game, also suffered a knee ligament injury against Canada while she's on international duty, and she'll miss up to a month, we're told. So not exactly short-term injuries, these knee ligaments, you've got to be careful with, and it just seems to mount on Arsenal, these injury problems. Yeah, obviously it's disappointing for the players themselves um, because they don't want time out. They, you know, they want to be competing week in, week out. And both those players you've mentioned are obviously seasoned national team stars too. So for them, this season is of huge importance to them. They want to try and pick up a trophy with the club, but they're obviously both going into the World Cup too. So they have to be sensible with how they manage themselves. And obviously the club, I'm sure, will look after them and bring them back when, it, when it's a suitable time to do so. Well, those are concerns for Arsenal for another day and their respective international teams, particularly for Elisa Evans, who Scotland side are, of course, going to the World Cup in France in the summer. For now, it's all about Arsenal getting a result and Vivian Miedemar could make history today. She's equalled Ellen White's 15 goals for an entire WSL season. So another one would mean that she surges ahead as the top scorer in any season in the Women's Super League. And it were only in January, so uh, I think it's pretty clear that she will break that. And it's Reading who get us underway at Adams Park. Up against Arsenal, who find themselves second in the WSL for the first time after two defeats in three, losing to Manchester City and then Chelsea. Well, what it does look like um, <clears throat> we're seeing early doors in the game is that uh, the both teams are taking up the same systems that they played in the first game. They encountered each other earlier in the season with Redding playing their diamond midfield with 4-4-2 organisation. And then uh, Arsenal doing some, something slightly different to what they'd normally do every week in, week out. They're playing a back three, but they go man-to-man -man with a, a midfield four of a diamond organisation. And then a, a front three up top. And it's, for me, that's a really attacking organization against uh, this Reading team so uh, obviously the intent is there from the off with, with that organization to start with it's a long throw from Harding it's Chaplin trying to take it under her spell it's out to Mead who is challenged by Remy Allen it's good to see Beth Mead on the pitch actually because she was forced off a half time against Chelsea so some respite for Arsenal in that respect Here is Mead. She didn't join up with Phil Neville's England squad in Qatar for that training camp, so she's had a bit of a rest. And she's looking sharp. Here is Beth Mead, bit of a heavy touch. Oh, it's presented straight to Mead. Amar McCabe, charged down by Bartrip. Arsenal will come again. Here's Via. Mead Amar, 1-0. What a start from Arsenal. Vivian Miedemar, inside the first three minutes, moves to 16 WSL goals for the season. A record. And that is just what the doctor ordered for Arsenal. Well, in the build-up to that goal, I was actually admiring the youngster, Koiken, getting on the ball, you know, taking on two players in a wide area and then bringing others into play. And obviously, it went on from there. If you see the possession of Arsenal having a wide area, obviously, Reddy need to be pressing those balls quicker. And now Miedema, having that amount of time and space around the six-yard area, that's going to cause you problems. And she proved, you know, that proved to be the case. A little bit too much time to take that down, Jane. 
Yeah, way too much time. If, you know, I was watching the last game they played yesterday evening and, and similar situation. I'm surprised the Reading haven't organised better in these instances and made sure that people are latching on to someone like me, on her skill and levels of talent when she's in the box because she's going to be dangerous. And for her, that's an easy opportunity. Obviously, we had one defender trying to fly out to correct things, but it was too late. Well, what a start for the Gunners. Just what they needed. And that is just what Kelly Chambers won't have wanted from her Reading side, considering what happened the last time these two sides met. Well, what she will obviously be hoping for now is, is that the next 10 minutes pans out differently to in the first game. You know, uh, Marcel went 2-0 up within the first 10 minutes in that game. Obviously, uh, Kelly Chambers and her staff are hoping now that Reading are going to show a little bit more resilience and get back in the game, hopefully quickly. Here's Harding. Little with the clearance. Niedermar tries to get away. It's a good challenge by Moore. Niedermar dispossessed. This game could, could work out to be a game that uh, the ball is in central areas of the pitch a lot because of the both formations and, uh, you know, both teams want to get on the ball. Both both styles of play are about building and, you know, getting on the ball, um, bringing others into play as quickly as they can and having support movements going forwards quickly and effectively. So it'll be interesting to see how much this wide area is used and if it is used, how effective it's used because it could end up creating some goal-scoring opportunities for each team. And Arsenal's defence hasn't been quite as robust as it had been earlier in the season either. No, one of the things that impressed me more so than anything with this team at the start of the year was their ability to press teams high up on the pitch and, and go as a group, so not just one individual chasing, but they're all latching on and they're pinching balls in the opposition half, which, again, you know, with the talent they've got when they're getting balls in that area of the pitch, they're going to create goal-scoring opportunities. Here is Farrah Williams allowed to turn. Kim Little. Now Williamson. What we do see from Arsenal today is Kim playing obviously wide of the, the diamond midfield for them, which is a little bit different to what people would be used to. She's now now 10, so you'd think that she'd be taking the position just a little bit deeper than Miedema. But as you can see right now, we've got Koiken, the youngster, taking up that role, number 24 on the pitch. So her role is going to be paramount to, to trying to get Miedema on, on, on the ball a lot. Here today. is Miedema. Couldn't quite force her way through on that occasion. Arsenal. Keeping the pressure on. And Beth Mead tries to get the cross in. It stays in. Here's Pacheco trying to bring it away. Bloodworth. It's going to be picked up by Beth Mead. Reading caught on their heels a touch. Just evaded Kaiken. Here's Furness. Strong challenge by Williamson, but a fair one, or was it? She got the ball, the referee has decided that Williamson did commit the foul. It's a pretty late call, that seemed to be. It did seem fair from, from our angle, but uh, obviously the referee has seen something different. Did she catch her ankles? <laughs> if I'm in red, that's definitely <laughs> not a free kick. If I'm in blue, there's a free kick. Or in the red dugout, Jane. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't be quite happy with that. <laughs> Just in case you have missed it, it is Aaron Dantino who is in the Arsenal dugout. Joe Montemuro, the Arsenal boss, laid up at home. And if you are watching Joe, we wish you all the best. Speedy recovery. I'm sure this will make him feel a little bit better, though, the start that Arsenal have had. And there is Aaron Dantino. Been knocking on the door saying you should give me the job. It's very crowded in those central areas of the pitch right now when obviously they're technicians, both both sets of players, so they're able to get out of those situations. Via with a lot of space, couldn't find Miedemar. Who'd uh, offered some good movement. 
So some teams have chosen to go up against Arsenal this year and counter-attack whenever they have a, the opportunity to do so, especially when goalkeepers picking the ball up, they're trying to go forwards quickly. Um, and it's been useful for some teams, but Reading seem to not be choosing to do that right now. They're trying to build, they're trying to break Arsenal down by building and playing through them. We see Molly Bartrip on the ball there, who's taking the place of um, Kirsty Pierce for this game today. It's nice to see Molly playing again. She's been in and out of the team, I believe, through the season so far. It's a decent ball up towards Brooke Chaplin. It was going to favour the goalkeeper, but it's that straight. But it's a good run by Brooke Chaplin. Furness forward. Quinn stepping in. You're absolutely right. Arsenal are getting a lot of joy down the flanks, aren't they? Yes, predominantly the right side of the pitch for them right now. Either team could, could make use of that area a little bit better. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm sure the coaches will be seeing it on the sideline and trying to try and get some information on, onto the pitch to try and change that. Going through those central corridors right now seems to be uh, something hard to try and break down with all those bodies there. Good take from Allen. Invites Chaplin forward. I'd, I would have expected in the first 10 minutes of this game to have more intensity from both teams. I think both teams can lift their levels right now, especially when they're out of possession and they're pressing game, because at times I've seen both teams do that particularly well. Right now, both teams, they're standing off each other which is, is not what I expected, if I'm honest. Neat play by Little, as expected. Don't think she, well, she didn't join up with the Scotland team, despite being fit. She played the full 90 minutes against Chelsea in the last game, so clearly a, a discussion and agreement between club and country. Yeah, I'd imagine so. You know, if a player is fully fit and, and the country decides to to leave the player with the club, then I'm sure that, that there's been good communications, effective communication between club and country there. And, and if you look at the Scottish national team, I'm sure uh, Shelley Kerr is going through a process right now of trying to give her full squad game time. And, and uh, you know, you'd sit here and you'd you'd expect Kim to be in that starting lineup come the World Cup, whereas others are you know vying for positions to get alongside her. Took a little deflection of Vivian Miedemar's goal, but will certainly be hers. And adds to her tally again now for uh, for this season. 23 in all competitions, not a bad return. After a bit of a slow start to her Arsenal career. Yeah, I think she's been phenomenal this year compared to, to the, uh, the performances I saw from her last year. She seems like a brand new player. Here is Miedemar dropping deep. nearly cut out by Brooke Chaplin. She continues to star for the Netherlands, Miedemar. It's a ridiculous record she has. 54 goals in 66 appearances for the Netherlands. Yeah, and they're a great team. You know, that they, they actually did us a favour prior to our last uh, oh, championship, yes. our qualifiers. We, they were the last uh, friendly competition we had before going into our, our Euros, and they absolutely battered us. They smashed <laughs> us. And it was a case of, you know, us trying things and the wrong time to try things. But but it woke us up as a team, you know, the levels we wanted to get to as a Welsh national team needed to, to our standards needed to be higher and we needed to change certain things so that we could be com competitive. So I'm actually very thankful to them. <laughs> At the time I wasn't, but right now I was going to say, back, I think that's the first time I've ever heard a manager thank a team for battering no, they, their They, <laughs> they side. were flying, obviously, a month later, they picked up the European uh, trophy and they exposed us in all the areas that we, you know, our relative weaknesses, I guess, and then we had to make changes, and we did, thankfully. Little. But no, she, she Miedema is, you know, one of many in that very talented national team squad right now. I'm sure they'll do very well in the World Cup. Obviously, they they fought to get there, which was a, a mm. bit of a surprise to everyone. To go through the playoffs. Yes, but uh, I'm sure they'll do very well now that they're there. And a great pass by Little. Mitchell got there first. That wasn't either. 
but they're managing to still retain the ball, um, unfortunately for Reading, because they're, they're, you know, they're, they're forcing them into certain areas, but not managing to pick, pinch the ball back from them. It's a very good header by Bartrip, because if she'd misjudged that, Miedemar was lurking. Intercepted by McCabe. You can see with Reading's defensive organisation, they're trying hard to keep Arsenal on one side of the pitch, but Arsenal is still managing to come out, switch play and get around, around their original press. Another shove in the back. Found a free kick to Reading. It's good to see Emma Mitchell back as well. She's had her injury problems like most of this Arsenal squad. But a penny for the thoughts of uh, Kelly Chambers, the Reading manager. Well, look, the, there's aspects of, of their game that we're not seeing right now that, that they would pride themselves on, in a sense, again, the ball down and playing and, and, and combining really well. That, that's what they like to do, short passes, you know, movement in and around the ball area so they have passing options that they can play quickly. And we're not seeing that being effective right now. Well, it's certainly an improvement, isn't it, on the reverse fixture, because they completely fell apart, didn't they, after the conceding the first goal, and they've managed to keep Arsenal at bay so far anyway. Yes, but, but knowing Kelly Chambers and her group of staff, I'm sure they'd be expecting more from that group of players that they have out there right now, and this may give them an opportunity here. For a chaplain putting Louise Quinn under pressure, forcing a throw deep in the Arsenal territory. Those incisive balls, actually, from the back have caused a few problems. Yeah, it'll be interesting today to see how the front two of Reading can expose areas against that back three of Arsenal. Whether they, you know, they can time their movements into those wider areas and try and drag them out into spaces they don't particularly want to go into. Obviously, to do that effectively, the pass option in the first place has to be uh, accurate and timed well. It's Furness with the delivery. And Quinn did just enough. Didn't really fancy herself in a foot race with Chaplin. So the long throw from Harding. Or maybe not so long. Oh, still deciding. Yeah, she seemed to be waiting for a setup to be organised then. So I'm not sure if that's gone a bit against the routine they'd normally use. Didn't come to Ta much, did it? Tash Harding does have a very good throw. Obviously, we use it as a national team, uh, and it's very effective when we need to use it. It is such a weapon. We haven't seen her on the pitch, I don't think, at all, well, for a very long time. The Manchester City defender, Megan Campbell. Did you see her throw? Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's, um, that's lethal. It's like a sort <laughs> that's, that's of bullet. That's actually like um, a free kick <laughs> yeah. or a corner. It's as effective. I've never you know? seen anything like we're, it. We're playing them in the next few months, so that's something we have to be aware of. <laughs> that's a great tool to have. It's a bit of a coming together over on that far side. Farrah Williams actually turned 35 two days ago. Oh, gosh, that makes me feel old. <laughs> still going. There's still yeah. time, Jane. When we used to have uh, battles, obviously I was a lot older then, and she was the younger one coming through, the very talented, younger, energetic, central midfield player that was coming through when we had some good battles. I enjoyed those <laughs> games against Farrah. And, you know, she, there's no reason why she can't keep doing it for the next few years, because her form this season has been... Uh, particularly good, you know, getting on the end of balls in the box and on the scoring sheet for them. A bit different to the role she's had probably for the previous 10 years with many of the clubs she's played. You know, she, she was an organiser, the one that sits in front of the back line, breaks up play, but also um, creates goal-scoring goal opportunities for others. Here's McCabe, as the weather takes a slight turn. At Adams Park. Williams to 
Chaplin, now Remy Allen. You can hear it, can't you? Hail coming down. Miedemar, lovely touch and a burst of pace. Doesn't have too many options ahead of her. Miedemar might try and go alone <laughs> and try the uh, cheeky back heel, which didn't quite come off. The good thing from a Reading perspective there is they've got bodies back quickly and obviously they've crowded it out. The disappointing thing is giving possession away in the area that they had it. Here's Rachel Ferns, one so of Sunderland. So we're seeing that patient build up again from, from Reading putting balls into central areas to try and drag players out to create spaces in and around that area for them to use. That is a shame. That was a wonderful pass from Potter. Goodness me. Not pleasant to play in, I imagine. I used to love January. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it, especially on the pitches we used to end up playing on. They were generally a little bit wet during January and you'd slide for about 20 metres. How about January when you're sitting on the bench? <laughs> OK, not as nice. <laughs> I agree. Jade Moore. To Maloney and now Potter. She's got a wealth of experience, this Reading side. Bruton goes down, nothing doing from the referee. Is McCabe. Good movement from McCabe there, obviously um, coming just on the outside shoulder of Rachel Furness, who's Furness plays as kind of the base of that midfield diamond for Reading. So as a one rather than a two man screen in front of your back line, they can be exposed. That player can be exposed either side of them. And that's what, what we see from the Arsenal diamond, trying to expose that when they're in possession, trying to work each side of Furness, which will end up dragging a centre back out. Or if it doesn't, it gives you time and space on the ball to run at that back line. A good turn from Remy Allen. Another good one from Williams. You can see what Williams was trying to do. Harding was the intended target. It's nicely done by McCabe. Good feet. A good sweeping up by the 17 year old Ava Kaiken who was slotted in nicely. A yeah, good work ethic from the youngster there. No Arsenal have been forced to field teenagers when perhaps they wouldn't have done this season, but certainly hasn't done them any harm. No, I always look at those. If you're, if you're that player, it's an opportunity you need to take because, you know, those opportunities don't come around very often when you're in a, a team full of national team players. And, and when they do come around, you know, it's about performing when it's necessary. and. And these youngsters at Arsenal seem to be capable of doing that. Here's Via. McCabe. Just wonder if the pitch is going to start to deteriorate in these conditions. Very heavy rain in Buckinghamshire. You do wonder whether the, the weather is actually playing a part with regards to the red in build-up play, because that wind does look particularly strong right now with that driving rain as well. So maybe an advantage either half for, for each team. Yeah, it looks like Arsenal have the wind at their backs this half. Look at that, goodness me. Beth Mead is dispossessed. It's a lovely crisp sunny day ahead of kickoff. That's January in England for you. Well, at least it's not snowing. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> I'm sure that's we, next. That's what I was thinking back to last <laughs> week when we went out to Italy. That's what we uh, arrived to when we turned up to the stadium, really thick snow on the pitch, <laughs> thinking, oh, this might not be playable. But no, thankfully, we played in. It was fine. But uh, yeah, no snow yet in, uh, in Reading. <laughs> Still time. <laughs> On a foul and a free kick for Reading in a very good position. 
And they do have some of the excels in these situations <laughs> on the pitch there. Obviously, Farrah Williams that we've just seen there. She loves the, these opportunities to get on the, the scoring sheet. Mitchell just went through the back of her there. And in these conditions, not so good for goalkeepers, we should add. And a booking for Emma Mitchell. Not too many complaints from the left back. No, it didn't. It didn't seem too harsh uh, on first look, but um, the fact that she's not complaining, I'm sure there was something uh, <laughs> untoward there. Well, rather them than me. It'll be fine, there's under armour and everything <laughs> these days. We didn't have, uh, have that 20 years ago. <laughs> you were swimming in your shirts, weren't you? <laughs> oh, it's a clever dinks Just one. And team, eh? big penalty shout. The referee was quick to wave away the protests. I think it was Lauren Bruton that got hit quite heavily there, but the referees probably allowed it because obviously the person with the contact is, has ended up contacting the ball and clearing the ball, so that their eyes are on the ball, I believe. Um, but one that I'm sure Reading would have asked for. Well, let's have a look at this. It was a very clever free kick from uh, Farrah Williams. Yes, it was Bruton who made the run, it was Miedemar. It's an unusual technique to use. Effective now, obviously, there's no penalty given. It's effective. Was it could potentially be an arm as well. Um, I'm sure Lauren Bruton would have felt the full force of that. Yes, no? Yeah, I've seen them given that, you know, that, the, yeah. <laughs> Again, if I'm in the blue, ball, I, I would have been asking very politely there for a penalty. <laughs> politely? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, Miriam didn't get the ball, did she? And really flattened Lauren Bruton. I think Reading might feel slightly hard done by. Thankfully, Lauren Bruton looks OK. Yeah, that could have been much worse, actually, in terms of injury. It's a nice movement from Bruton. She's absolutely taken out by Miedemar. Arsenal slightly fortunate. And as quick as it started, the rain, the hail has ended. What we've seen now for the last 15 minutes is kind of two teams cancelling each other out in many ways. Um, not many goal scoring opportunities, not many uh, chances of getting the ball in the final third for each team. Started very well for Aaron Dantino, a goal inside the first three minutes. The assistant coach standing in today for the stricken Joe Montemuro. Been down all week, we understand, with the flu. It's a good challenge, but it's picked up by Little. Williamson. And now Mead. It's a good delivery on a terrific save. It was Miedemar's header. Here's Via. Kim Little's there. Couldn't get the power or the position straight into the arms of Maloney. Two good opportunities there for Arsenal. And, you know, this first delivery from Beth Mead has just summed up her season so far. She's been absolutely fantastic with her deliveries from wide areas against different teams. Unusual there for Miedemar to not make a great contact, but obviously Grace Maloney up to the test there. Point-blank range, Grace Maloney, who got her positioning spot on. And Miedema is down now. Receiving some treatment. And this is not a sight that any Arsenal fan or anyone associated with the club will want to see. No, and you, and you wonder whether there is something in that... It that recent incident there, or whether it's something she's been carrying throughout the game that's, that's gradually getting a little bit worse. Looks like she's just going to be patched up. 
Is that some deep heat? Here is the uh, incident. She may have just got caught in the melee, perhaps. She looks all right there. As you say, not a sight Arsenal fans would want to see right now. No, she's been the ever-present in the Arsenal team, started every single WSL game and has finished 12 out of... 11 out of 12 of them, I should say. Just subbed off once. She's, she doesn't look very comfortable at the moment. Some Arsenal substitutes warming up. Not a whole lot of options on the bench in terms of experience, anyway, in the attacking areas. Redding choosing to play a little bit more direct now and look to turn the Arsenal background early, uh, back line early. Unfortunately, they couldn't keep possession of it, even though they did manage to turn them. Bloodworth manages to help the ball out to Kim Little. Williamson, it's intercepted by Pacheco. Here's Chaplin. It's been pulled back for a foul on Bruton. That could have been an opportunity there for, for Reading to exploit if they could have got numbers uh, higher up the pitch quicker. Because the Arsenal back line were um, a little bit disorganised. Obviously, Leah Williamson has, has just driven over the halfway line and lost possession of the ball. Um, but Reading not, not uh, capable of, of uh, utilising that space when it was available then. So another opportunity from the set piece. The last one perhaps should have resulted in a Reading penalty. It's Potter this time, it's towards Furness. That's headed away, but straight to Molly Bartrip. Not a bad effort. Arsenal managed to clear their lines for now. Well, she struck it well, Molly Bartrip. Yep, yeah, um, opportunity there for Reading, but good numbers back for Arsenal and, and good reactions. So with set plays, you know, second phases are always really key. Lots of teams score in these, these positions because of uh, lack of reaction from defensive players, but lots of numbers there, and obviously they cleared the ball really effectively. Whether that was a shot or an attempt to help it into the penalty area, well, it wasn't bad. And this looks worrying. That was a really bad landing then. You know, I'm not sure if, if Kim Little has had you know, much to do with that. I think it was just a case of she's trying to attack it and the Redding players ended up going up over the top of, I believe it's Remy Allen. But a really awkward landing on her neck there. Awkward is the word, that did not look good. Alan trying to go for the ball and she went just all the way over Kim Little, didn't she? Yeah, she may get a bit of a stinger reaction, which is more, more, more common in rugby, actually, where, you know, you're stretching those nerves around the, the one side of the neck. Hopefully she's OK and she can continue, but uh, not a good looking uh, landing. Well, she's a tough cookie, Remy Allen, but of course, safety first. And we especially with a neck injury, you need to be very careful. It's always interesting when you have a break in play and you see players like Kim Little there going around and reorganising certain things or giving information to players. Um, I'd imagine she's probably thinking her team can do better right now. Uh, their standards are higher than what they've been able to show so far in this game. Well, of course, she'll want to continue, Remy Allen. I'm sure she'll try. Time will tell, I suppose, after she gets back onto the pitch. She looks OK. Well, Reading do have a couple of uh, midfielders who could slot in from the bench. Um, one being Jade Bailey, who's joined from Chelsea. Very recently, really good young talent. Uh, unfortunately, been out of the game for a few years with an ACL injury. 
Um, I believe she's still on the books at Chelsea and she's just ready on loan, but really talented youngster that we had in Arsenal Academy for many years. Really nice, nice person, nice kid, really talented individual. So it'd be good to see her to, to get on the pitch today if that's an opportunity for her. Remy Allen returns to the pitch for now. Didn't really expect anything less from Remy Allen. No, combative midfielder, been around for many years, and, and yeah, she'll be desperate to get back on that pitch. Hopefully she's okay. Here is Allen. Straight back into the action. Potter. Reading seem to be holding their fullbacks back more in this game. In the first game against Arsenal, they were trying, you know, one of the ways they play is they get their fullbacks joining in quickly and, and they have speed in those areas. But looking at the fullbacks in that recent build up play, then they are staying as a flat four predominantly, and it's a case of not releasing them too early so they don't get exposed. But it's actually taking something away from their attacking game because they need that person higher up the pitch in those wide areas. <laughs> A reminder of what else is happening today Chelsea against Birmingham, Manchester City against Brighton, both of those two o'clock kickoffs. Bristol City up against Yeovil at three, and tomorrow evening, seven o'clock, Liverpool versus West Ham United. And you can see all the highlights from today's games on the women's football show with Ailey Barber and very special guest Jordan Nobbs, who we'll hear from at half time. That starts at 11 o'clock tonight on BBC One, midnight in Scotland. Maybe a throw to Reading. Here's Harding. Bruton wanting the return pass. Mitchell puts it out of play. for the a sticky ball. There's more. Back to Harding. Little away. It's a good spell this by Reading. Yeah, and, and what you see from Arsenal now is obviously they've got good numbers back. Uh, the Arsenal wingers, uh, who's obviously there's a new player we haven't spoken too much about it, uh, today is Veya. Uh, one of the first starts, I believe, is our first start for the club. She's doing particularly well, and, and one of her roles, obviously, you know, big defensive role today with regards to when Reading fullbacks go forward, she has to get back and make sure she's that extra body on the outside of the centre backs, protecting that space for them. She's doing it particularly well. well the cards coming out here. Yeah, it hasn't really been an, a nasty game, has it? But um, interesting that we're getting some cards in the first half whether there's some niggles going on there obviously we can't see we're not that close to the um, the situations McCabe who joins her Arsenal teammate Emma Mitchell in the book for this incident it's not an awful lot in that perhaps it's a yellow card for tossing up. There's some good play there, but I think I, I believe it was Lauren Bruton because she's obviously holding McCabe on the one side, which the official can't see. Um, and she's pinning her really well, and McCabe is desperate to get on that ball and obviously just falling into that uh, a little bit there. <laughs> and can Reading take a full advantage of that clever bit of play from Bruton? Farrah Williams, it's a good delivery, but no one had made the run. You can see with Reading, they obviously work a lot on their set plays. They, they've changed up what they're doing on it. With that, you, you see a false movement from the group of players to try and take Arsenal's back line deeper to create more space to use. Obviously, when the delivery does come in, but what didn't work particularly well then was when the delivery came in, nobody was attacking it. A lot of chats between the referee and the Arsenal players in particular. Yeah, this seems to be one of those games that there's probably a lot of niggles or a lot of talking going on between the players. They, they get annoyed with certain things, and again, it's not things we, we cheer uh, or, or particularly see. 
uh, from our environment. Jade Moore, the latest to have a quick word. Williamson, good play, shrugs off the challenge and gets the free kick. Vantage was attempted. It's becoming very niggly, isn't it? Mm, lots of stoppages in play right now, which is probably making it tough for either team to, to, to get a foothold in the game. It seems a long time ago that Miedemar opened the scoring very early on. That's a decent looking ball towards Miedemar. Maloney was there, here's Kaiken! So nearly a debut goal for the 17 year old. She did everything right, just couldn't quite lift it over the defence, who did well to get back. Interesting choice here from Arsenal, obviously, to look longer, be more direct with the decisions, and yeah, nearly a great opportunity for Miedema. Unfortunately for Koiken, couldn't quite lift the ball enough to get it up over the players. I'm always impressed with that, though, from defenders, because it might look simple and easy enough, but you could end up ball watching. Yeah, and so many do. And, you know, that, that reaction, those, those out and out defenders are the ones who, you know, if something happens, there's a first phase or something, they're reacting immediately to protect that goal. That is their job, protect the goal first and foremost. And also recognise when their goalkeeper's out of position. So many people in those instances can just get drawn to the ball and then expose, obviously, the goal, which is the most important thing. an excellent ball by Bloodworth and Kaiken did everything right really because it was an awkward one wouldn't yeah. quite sit for her would it yeah difficult to control those those balls here's Mitchell that's a lovely pass here's Kim Little it's good defending well read to charge down the shot from Kim Little. As soon as Arsenal do get an opportunity to build in a wide area early, what happens with the red in defensive organisation is that diamond flattens off. But as it flattens off, there's space in central areas for then people like Kim Little to use really effectively. And she did, obviously, then in the last passage of play. Here's Mitchell. Couldn't quite, quite, couldn't quite find Via. Five minutes to go until half time. Reading still very much in this, although having said that, they haven't really troubled Pauline Perry Manning, mainly from set pieces, been their main threat. No, but I guess they'll be pleased that, um, yeah, apart from one or two chances I can remember, Arsenal haven't created many either, which is very different to obviously the first game they played earlier in the season. Here's Mead, goes for goal. And, well, hopefully claims the corner. Just opened up for Kim Little, but a difficult technique from that angle to get it on target. Yeah, Beth Mead's development this season has been really interesting one to watch. Um, taking up the wide position most of the time for the club. People will know her more as an out-and-out -out centre forward, goal scorer, you know, fox in the box. But she, her deliveries have been fantastic. I think back to, I think it was the West Ham game where she created so many of those goals by having pinpoint deliveries from wide areas. And West Ham really struggled to, to deal with her. A huge asset for England. Yeah, and it's good that, you know, she, she's versatile. So you can play, play it as that out-and-out -out centre forward or you can play a wider. Here's Mitchell. Potter with the half clearance. Harding with the header. Little. It's Williamson up from the back. Didn't get her angles right. 
Yes, it's an unusual uh, place to find Leah Williamson. The, you know, central areas, final third of the pitch. You know, she is the right-sided centre-back for Arsenal today. But what Arsenal do particularly well is they understand fluidity in the game, especially in position and in, in possession. And, you know, when pl one player is driving into space, somebody else is occupying the space they've left. So I'm sure there was cover behind her. And if she has more opportunities to do that, she's a confident young player and she'll be happy to do those things. But hopefully in the next one she'll get on target. Not long to go before the break. Just remind you to stay with us at half time. We'll have our top five volleys from the Women's Super League this season so far. We'll also get some news from the Manchester United camp. Very interesting game coming up for them. The Continental Cup semi finals against Arsenal after they dispatched another top tier side in West Ham. And we'll also hear from Jordan Nobbs, England and Arsenal midfielder with Ailey Barber. So do stick with us here on the red button. Here's McCabe. Oh, that's a lovely run by Miedemar. It's a really good combination playing in central areas then from Arsenal, managing to play around that tight diamond of, of Reading. Arsenal just seemed to lose their way a little bit during that half, and they just seem to be getting it back towards the end of it. The pressing game is very different when you think back to earlier in the season. These instances now where the ball is on the pitch, they would have been hunting that in packs really aggressively. Um, and it's, it's less so now. And, you know, it could be the, the tactical part of the game. That's what they want. You know, they're protecting areas behind them more so. Well, the assistant coach, Aaron Dantino, started taking notes before kickoff. So that's going to be a very long page of notes. And he's got one of those pens that have different colours. Look at that, he's using all of them. Oh, that's old school, that is. Brilliant. <laughs> Proper old school. This is iPad. <laughs> Do you think he borrowed that from Joe Montemuro? <laughs> he passed the proverbial baton, but it's actually a pen that has many colours. Yeah, I'm sure with regards to you know, how a, a manager and a head coach or assistant coach work together those relationships are always you know re really strong relationships and it, you know they, those, those those pairings they pretty much think very similarly think very alike with how the game should be played and they'll understand their players in a very similar way so i'm sure the thought process that he has right now will be very similar to what the boss has even though he might be watching from home sitting on the sofa well, mccabe latching onto a ball that shouldn't have reached that far from a Reading point of view. Four minutes of time added on. I think most of that from the Remy Allen injury, which thankfully she has recovered from. Interesting to see, you know, if, if the teams change anything when they come out for the second half, um, you know, personnel-wise, shape-wise. Because it, it's been a very scrappy game with regards to build up and play from both teams. Um, you know, you're not looking at more than five, six passes, maybe seven at the most, and, and we're losing balls. Both teams, I'm sure they could, they'll be expecting to do better. Perhaps a final opportunity for Reading to try and get one back. This would be a fabulous time to get an equaliser. Tasha Harding preparing. They haven't used the long throw yet, have they? They've set up quite a few times to use it, but then she's ended up playing shorter. And nearly found Williams. Here's Allen! Excellent effort from Remy Allen. I think the goalkeeper had it covered. But yes. it fell to her nicely. Successful throw routine there. Obviously, I believe it was Farrow ran off the back. Um, caught Arsenal out here with her movement, obviously not attacking the ball, but just her movement causing a problem for the Arsenal defenders. Well hit, but off target from Remy Allen, who's had an eventful first half. But she's been terrific since she joined Reading.
Reading ending the half well. Well, you see here, look, as the ball's in play, so much space, far side, right side of the pitch, but actually Reading aren't choosing to use it. Obviously, the bit, their prerogative, the way they want to try and break this Arsenal team down. But there's so much room to play on that the the far side of the pitch. Um, but it's Tash Harding in this instant, making a decision not to go forwards, and it might, must be part of the game plan. This was nicely played by Reading, and actually, Bloodworth with a very risky challenge indeed. I think Bruton perhaps could have made more of that. Yeah, and I suppose it's something in the female game, which is a good thing. You know, the players are honest. So, chance for Reading in the final minute of stoppage time. Joe Potter towards Furness. Didn't quite drop for Chaplin. Played back in. Arsenal under pressure late on here. Be great for Reading if they could get a goal back now. Change the mindset completely of the group as, as they walk back in for half time. A very good point has been made to me that. If that was the men's game, I think... We might have had a stretcher coming on. <laughs> <laughs> so not only they would have taken a tumble, they would have had to receive treatment. Oh, look, it is. You know, it's the levels <laughs> of the game, and, and it's the way the game has gone over the last few years, unfortunately, from the men's side. For, for the female side, it, you, do you know, in international football, you see it a lot more, uh, which can be frustrating for some teams, um, but then is it just part of the game and people have to get used to it? Um, unfortunately, that may be the case. There it is, an eventful first half that's still very much in the balance. We thought that Arsenal were going to run away with it. Vivian Miedemar scoring after just three minutes. But after that, it didn't really go Arsenal's way. They've huffed and they've puffed. Reading have been resolute and they've had a couple of chances of their own. Lauren Bruton maybe could have had a couple of spot kicks. We will analyse and reflect on that first half after we hear the thoughts of Jane Ludlow still on a knife edge, this one. Yeah, it could go either way, you know. When you look at the first five minutes, you're thinking, oh, Arsenal could uh, run away with this again, but Reading have stopped that happening. I think Arsenal haven't been at the level they can perform at in and out of possession, so their levels can go up. But from a Reading perspective, if you're their coaches going in now, you're relatively happy. You know, from the first five minutes, and you think of the last game you've played against them, you're going to be happy it's 1-0. But they've had opportunities to get back in this game. And quite apart from uh, the assistant manager there, Aaron Dantino, trying to remember his own colour codes, what will he say at half-time? Look, it, it is, it's, a, it's a frustrating game in many ways to watch because um, both teams are trying to build, but it's breaking down really quickly. So whether he goes in with the thought process of let's use certain areas of the pitch more effectively, let's play quicker. That's, that's the most disappointing thing for me with Arsenal right now. I think they can play far quicker. When they're pinching balls, they can transition far quicker. And that's been one of their strengths so far this season. So, second half, very exciting coming up, but let's reflect on that first half and see the major incidents from the first 45 minutes at Adams Park. It all started very well and very quickly for Arsenal. Miedemar scoring her 16th goal of the WSL season after just three minutes. Yeah, given lots of time and space to use here and obviously a big bit uh, fortuitous with how the ball's gone in and, and obviously Grace Maloney unable to react to, to the defender throwing herself in front of the ball. And then as the weather descended into uh, hail and thunder and lightning and uh, rain, I should say, Reading had a decent penalty shot. Yeah, this does look like it could be a penalty because, you know, the, the person contacting the ball, Miedema, isn't even facing the ball and she's putting her back uh, right into the player who is about to attack the ball. So could have definitely been a penalty to Reading. Arsenal had a chance to double their lead. Miedema causing the goalie some problems and Kaiken couldn't quite capitalise. No, difficult for a Kaiken to deal with as this comes back out to her relatively quickly. But, um, yeah, you know... Good from a Reading perspective, defenders back in protecting the goal immediately. And right at the end of the half, Remy Allen had arguably Reading's best chance, not too far away on that occasion. Yes, set play routine from Reading, you know, long throw, bit of disguise, bit of movement causing the opposition back lane a problem. And then right at the end, Lauren Bruton once again, well, very honest play, I would say. Bloodworth did get the ball, but 
perhaps on another day, Bruton perhaps could have gone down. Yeah, good time challenge from Bloodworth, I'd say. Terrific stuff. Let's move on then. We'll have the second half for you very shortly indeed. But we've noticed throughout the Women's Super League season there's been some terrific goals, in particular some brilliant volleys. Here's our top five so far. In the volley into the net. What a goal that is. And Caroline Weir gives Manchester City the lead. Here's Graham. There's a lot of bounces. Rutherford! Oh, it's stunning! What a strike from Rutherford. Space opening up now for Harding. Options in the middle. Farrow Williams, one of those. It is brilliant. What a finish. Top class from a top player. Here's Lynette. Sweep and curve. Wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Liverpool in front after a moment of real magic. Delivery. Spence is there. Oh, what a goal! Magdalena Eriksson. Opens the scoring in style. Some corkers there, Jane. I think we both agreed on our favourite, though. Yeah, Sweetman Kirk, I think, you know, she's on the move. She's travelling away from goal, and then she has to control the ball and try and flip her body round at the same time. Now, great goal. I did like Farrah Williams as well, because that ball was pinged to her on the edge of the box, and again, she's managed to control it effectively. I think almost for her, because we know what she can do, she kind of gets deducted points almost. It's just usual. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. She seems to do that most weeks. Let's focus now on the second tier of, the, of women's football, the Women's Championship. This is the table at the start of play today. There are a few games going on at the moment. Pretty tight at the top, as you can see, and it's not Manchester United who are topping the table at the moment. Tottenham Hotspur doing extremely well, but of course you can see there, Manchester United have that game in hand, so can overtake them. But perhaps not as uh, close as one would have thought with Manchester United being the full-time outfit that they are. Here are the fixtures that are taking place today in the championship. And we'll reflect on those in the women's football show later on. As you can see, goals between Aston Villa and Leicester City and high-flying Durham leading by goal to nil against Crystal Palace. No game this weekend for Manchester United. They've had a couple of games postponed actually in unfortunate circumstances this season. They'll still be hoping to top that table come May, and they have a very tasty tie in the Continental Cup semi-finals with Arsenal coming up after they beat West Ham in the quarter-finals. So we thought it was a good time to catch up with three of their stars. Big news this summer was the revival of the Manchester United women's team. Memo to the WSL, beware the Red Devil women. Everybody wants us to fail. Put on the shirt and you feel the weight of what you represent. Do you ever think, looking back to when we first signed, that like the first game would walk out and there'd be like four and a half thousand people out there? I didn't expect that at all. I was I was proper taken aback by, you know, especially how the fans have embraced us. You know, as a club, Man United have got such a massive following, but I feel like they've taken us under under their wing, haven't they? And we've got our own little fan base that travel everywhere. The Barmy Army. <laughs> the Barmy Army. I have to give them a mention. Exceeded your expectation? I think what surprised me the most is how well we're playing together. You know, there was always that thing about dropping down to the championship and stuff, and I didn't know what to expect from that aspect and, you know, training and, you know, how quick we, we've all gelled and... Yeah, know, we all know each other, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> we do, <laughs> especially the turn twins. <laughs> I like the season so far. Beating Everton. I think people probably stepped back and thought, do you know what, like, Man United have, have got something in it. And that was sort of a, a turning point for me where I thought, you know what, we can compete. First game of the season against Liverpool when we beat them, that was unbelievable, I think. And we just wanted to get out there and showcase what we could do, and we did that. Beating West Ham was a big game for us. It was obviously like our the highest ranked WSL team that we played. and. 
to score two goals, to keep another clean sheet and to put in a really solid performance. I think we went out there and we won the battle as well as, as well as winning the game and I think that was important for us. Because it came after the Everton game, obviously, it made it seem like, oh, well, it weren't just a one-off. You know, like, we can compete and we can do that week in, week out. Man United Arsenal is kind of one of those ties that you see written down and you get excited about it no matter whether it's men, women, under 23s, it's always going to be like a big game. And I'm excited, I think it's going to be a, another big challenge, obviously Arsenal are doing really well this season, I think it's the next big challenge that we're all ready for. There's no pressure, Arsenal are expected to win this game, so for us it's go there, enjoy the game, enjoy the, the atmosphere, I'm sure our Barmy Army will be there yes, singing loud and proud. Of course they will. If we'd have said at the start of the season that we'd be in a semi-final, I think we'd be quite happy with that, given we've never even met each other six months ago. We just want to go and show everyone what we can do against the best teams in the country. I'll tell you what, that's going to be a really interesting Continental Cup tie, isn't it? Arsenal against Manchester United. Manchester United, actually, it was fairly simple for them to, uh, to beat West Ham United, who've shown flashes, haven't they? They've been very inconsistent, so it's hard to judge them, isn't it, we were saying before. So this will be a really interesting test to see where they actually are, Manchester United. Yeah, look, well, when it was announced, you know, many months back that they were coming into the women's game, it, I thought it was fantastic because we've got another big club who are going to take the women's game seriously, bring professionalism into their environment and give players opportunities to be pros and develop our game. So I think it was great and I think it's great they're competing well in the championship. But I also would say about the championship, you know, you've got Tottenham in there and you've got other teams in and around there who are doing fantastic things for the women's game too. And maybe it's a good thing they're not getting spoken about because if, if that was me in that club, in that environment, that'd be driving me on immensely right now to make sure that we finish above the Man United team come the end of the season. Don't forget, you can watch the women's football show. It's on BBC One tonight at 11 o'clock. Slightly later start in Scotland at midnight. Let's go pitch side now to the women's football show presenter who's with very special guest, Jordan Nobbs. Thanks, Robin. And I just have to say, first of all, it is absolutely freezing down here. We've just had a hail shower as well passing through. It is not nice conditions pitch side. But Jordan, it's lovely to have you with us. I'm sure, though, you'd much rather have been out there, wouldn't you? Yeah, um, you know, I'm good to be on the sidelines, but um, it comes with football. And um, yeah, I'm glad we're one nil up. It's uh, keeping me calm. <laughs> We just heard from some of the Manchester United players there ahead of the, the Continental Cup semi-final. I mean, they are a championship club, but it's going to be a real test for both of you, isn't it? And particularly right, for Arsenal with, no. with the injury problems that you have it's right now. Pot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, Man United have beaten Liverpool and West Ham, so they've, they've shown where they are at, at as a club. And I'm sure they're relishing the chance to play Arsenal and, and want to beat us. So, yeah, we, we can't underestimate that. And... Unfortunately, we have a lot of injuries at the moment, which isn't an excuse, but, um, you know, I believe in the strength in our squad and, um, you know, today, obviously going in at 1-0 at half-time is, is good for us. Yeah, it was a perfect start for Arsenal today. Like you say, injury problems. The league, though, this is a huge game for Arsenal because the league has slightly changed over the last few rounds of, of WSL matches. Yeah, you can never underestimate this league and how quickly, um, you know, the top four can swap and change. So. Um, you know, luckily for us, we've got a player like Viv who can um, score goals. And uh, yeah, it was nice to get an early goal. But um, yeah, Chelsea and uh, Man City are, are definitely catching us up. And we need to just make sure that we're concentrating on every single game. We have just watched um, Van der Donk. She's going through a pretty rigorous warm up <laughs> just now. It looks like she might be coming on. And what difference do you think that will make to, to the way that Arsenal are attacking in particular? You know, she's a top quality player, but um, her engine is, um, you know, what's needed in our side. And I think at the moment, Viv's a little bit isolated up front. So hopefully she can create a little bit more, um, you know, support to her on the ball. And um, yeah, it's good to have her back. No Joe Montemuro here today either. He's been away, he's been ill all week. Joe, we hope you get better soon if you are watching this. Um, how difficult has that been though? How challenging has it been to prepare for this game, not having, having Joe there as well? Yeah, um, he's not been well all week, so we haven't seen him for a week. Um, and he just creates this calm um, feeling around the squad. You know, you, you don't feel stressed or, 
you know, he's never worried about injuries or, or what's going to happen. He just takes every day as it comes. So, yeah, it's not great for us to not have had him this week, but um, the girls are all very professional and um, I'm sure he's, hopefully he's watching at home, but, um, yeah, it'll be good to have him back. And, I'm, I mean, it's, it was a great first performance from the girls considering we haven't had our manager all week. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be very pleased, particularly with the way the, uh, the game started. Um, talking about the, you though you are into the training center you are going through your rehab what sort of stage are you at and and how frustrating has it been as I know you're somebody I mean you're so active out on the pitch and to have to go through all this must be really difficult yeah um you know I'm absolutely heartbroken that I can't be playing in a major tournament in the summer and um obviously you know I felt like this was probably one of the best starts to my seasons I'd I'd had at Arsenal so as a footballer, it's never easy, but um, yeah, I, I got to lose the crutches a few weeks ago and, um, you know, I think you've just got to pull your socks up and, and focus on the gym and, you know, how quickly can I come back and how strong can I come back in, in this long period of time. So, yeah, it's good to be back in the gym and hopefully um, I can step up my level when I come back and play for Arsenal again. Do you still have a role within the team or are you someone when you're injured you need to sort of step back and and take yourself out of that because it is it is very hard as a, of somebody who's a player that's your job that's what you do every day to suddenly not be able to do that yeah I like to hope I still have a little bit of an impact but I think um, you know when it comes to injuries and and the girls playing you know you, you still have to focus on yourself and I, I totally understand that the girls have to focus on going out on the pitch and the same as people who are injured you know they have to fully focus on their rehab and doing everything professional so you know there's so much you can do off the pitch and talk to players but ultimately you know everyone's got to work hard themselves and um, you know I, I hopefully show my full support to the team and um, yeah I'm fully by their side all the way. Well, we are very glad to have you here with us today and the women's football show will be on at 11 o'clock tonight the ball girls are coming out around us just now so the second half is just shortly about to get underway so let's get back to Jane and to Robin. Thanks Ailey. Doesn't it bring a tear to your eye? Seeing her in a coat, not in a Arsenal kit. I'm absolutely gutted for her. Knowing her uh, as an individual, you know, away from the playing side, she's a lovely person. Uh, lives and breathes football. Obviously, it's disappointing for the club not to have her. But for her as an individual, I feel for her. Uh, it's a massive chunk of time out for a young player. And, you know, she is a young player to me. She seems like she's been around many That's years. That's the thing. <laughs> but... Um, when you think of her career right now, she missed opportunities in the World Cup when they were out there and, and you know, she was in the squad but she didn't play much and that was, I think, due to a hamstring injury at the time. And now this has happened to her and you kind of think, oh, you know, I can't wait to see her in a major tournament final because for me, she's always one of the player of the match, you know. Um, her performance levels are so consistent and they always have been. I'm just really looking forward to seeing her play in the near future. Well, not ne not so near future, unfortunately. You can see our cameras are focusing on Danielle van der Donk, who looks to be moving freely and will perhaps come on in the second half. Named on the bench today, she missed the Chelsea game, the last game with a thigh injury, and didn't go on international duty with the Netherlands. So great to see her back and that she's not suffered a very serious injury like a lot of the others in this Arsenal team. If you missed it earlier, Lisa Evans and Leah Volti, the latest to be sidelined for at least a month each with knee ligament damage. And there is Vivian Miedemar, who has officially broken the record for most goals in a WSL season. She had equaled Ellen White and her early goal here at Adams Park against Reading has taken her to 16 goals and there are still seven and a half games left. So I dare say she'll add to that. Yeah, she's had a good season so far. Um, when you think back to the start of the season, the amount of opportunities they were creating for her as a team, obviously they've they've helped her along the way massively, but you know, it's up to her. She has all the pressure to make sure they go in the back of the net. So an early goal for me tomorrow today, but the few chances that they have fashioned in that first half Arsenal they haven't taken they haven't been quite at their free-flowing best understandable due to the cost of personnel changes but Reading will feel they have a chance here if they're a bit more adventurous perhaps yeah interesting to see now if any if either team change shape and try and utilize different spaces on the pitch more effectively um, 
rather than nullify each other, because I think that's what we, you'd say about the first half predominantly, they nullified each other. Um, but as we said at the start of the game, both teams are desperate for a win here. So I'm expecting to see some changes. May not be personal, maybe just organisationally. Well, we're just about ready for the second half. Arsenal leading by goal to nil, thanks to their number 11, Vivienne Miedemar, who I think wants to get going. <laughs> she looks very cold right now. <laughs> Here we go. Can run around now, Viv. And with Manchester City leading the WSL ahead of proceedings today by a single point, Arsenal do have that game in hand. Very important that they take maximum points this afternoon. Manchester City kicking off at two o'clock at home to Brighton and given their respective forms, you'd expect that to be a Manchester City win. Yeah, obviously a team who have who've done very well this season again and is expected to do very well. Uh, might have had a few slip-ups, you know, drawn a couple of games, but um, still a very strong outfit and, and they'll be expecting to be vying for that uh, trophy at the end of the season. Reading managed to take a point at the Academy Stadium earlier in the season and we shouldn't discount Chelsea either. I think everyone else was, I myself was, given their start to the season. I'm really enjoying watching their games at the moment because you can see the coach, Emma Hayes, is obviously <laughs> desperate to, to get them back performing well, and they have been. It's, it, maybe it's not a bad thing because you've got those you know, champions uh, who are now having to fight every single game, and you're seeing some great performances from them as individuals. Yep, Chelsea now just three points off Manchester City. They have played a game more. So an interesting race for the title and indeed the top two as well. Birmingham not far behind, 25 points. So three behind Chelsea, five behind Arsenal. And their new coach, Marta Teohor, will take charge today. Yeah, really keen to see what changes she brings. Uh, really experienced coach, works at the, worked at different levels of the game, been an under-20 national team coach, been a senior national team coach, been a club coach in Spain, uh, FIFA representative, so, you know, does technical reports, so very much a coach, I see her as, so somebody who's going to be on the grass regularly, obviously has managerial skills, but I'd imagine similar to, to Mark Skinner, who recently left, somebody who will be dictating on the, on the pitch every day. Not the easiest of starts for her, away at Chelsea, Kings Meadow pitch took a bit of a beating last night and AFC Wimbledon beat West Ham in the FA Cup, so that'll be interesting to see. Arsenal in a good position here. Floated in, Miedemar was completely unmarked, but maybe it was just fired a bit too strongly at it. It seemed like she was trying to control it, to try and bring it down for herself or for someone else around her, which potentially was uh, Veya at the time. That's a good delivery by Mitchell and just off balance, I think McCabe can quite get the connection she wanted. Great delivery here from Mitchell, obviously pinpoint onto McCabe's head, but unfortunately not able to get a balance right and able to spring and attack the ball. Well, I'm not sure what Miedemar was attempting there, but either way, it didn't really come off. That was a chance from McCabe. She scored some excellent goals for Arsenal. I can't really remember a header, though. Just off the top of my head. Similar structure from both teams so far. It's very nice from Reading. It's given away. Here's Farrah Williams. Turned into McCabe. So what we see is Reading building into those middle thirds of the pitch, but right now not capable of getting into the final third and create goal-scoring opportunities from their build-up play. Niedermar putting Maloney under pressure. Delayed press from there at times from Arsenal, different to what they've done in the past, but they've managed to regain possession. And so an effective press. And Vaya wins the corner kick. First one of the afternoon in the second half. <laughs> what a sight that is. 
Yeah, some interesting talent on the bench there. Good to, to see them on the pitch at some point this afternoon, if possible. Obviously, Gemma Davison, one of the older ones there on the bench, who's been at uh, varying clubs over the, la over the last 10 years. Obviously, started at Arsenal with us as a youngster, went to Chelsea, now finds herself fighting for a place in Reading. Mead to Mead Amart. It's a nice dummy from Mead and a good delivery. Maloney just, just enough to smother. Little gets it back. Here's Williamson. It's a teasing delivery towards Miedemar, just a little bit too in front of her. And they still have possession of the ball, so we could see another opportunity here. Via set up the first goal, just over the head of Quinn, who was up from the back. The tempo of the Arsenal game is a lot slower than what we've seen at times throughout the season. It's a lot pe it's pe many would say patient. I, uh, being an ex-Arsenal player, would say slow. <laughs> um, they are capable of playing far quicker and exploiting spaces earlier and having much more movement off the ball right now. In many ways, I think they're playing into Reading's hands. I understand an Arsenal sub is imminent. Here comes Daniel van der Donk, give them a huge boost. Thinking back to Jordan Nobbs, you know, she highlighted half-time, obviously, the strengths of this player with regards to her movement off the ball and, and support movements to their centre-forward, Miedema. Um, and Arsenal will be hoping that she can create those uh, opportunities and, and provide that help to Miedema today. Ava Kaiken comes off. Quitted herself well in her first WSL start, but... Daniel van der Donk just brings that quality that she's shown throughout particularly this season, 10 in 11 WSL games. So mainly against West Ham, she likes to score against them. Experienced player, explosive player, versatile player. Good pressure from Reading, forcing an error from, from the Arsenal back line there. Here's Pacheco. Tripped. And another opportunity for Reading from these set pieces. Definite foul. You may see a different routine again from Reading. Obviously, different side of the pitch to, to what they had first half. Whether they use that false movement, that false line again to try and create more space in around the uh, the defensive organisation of Arsenal, we'll see. Farah Williams leaves it to Potter. Williamson gets her head to it. It's disappointing because the detail of, uh, on the pass that those players are capable of is far better than that. Now, is it the detail of the pass? Is the pass not going where it should go? Or is it actually the runs aren't attacking the ball? I, I wouldn't know because I don't see the detail of the set plays, but they are disappointing from a Reading point of view today. Well, that's a tricky one. And Pauline Perro Manning forced into a save that she wasn't expecting to make. And guess who? Farrah Williams with that audacious attempt. Yeah, with many players, you'd look, oh, you know, was that luck? Did she mean that? Well, Farrah Williams has just delivered that. Obviously, she meant it. And unfortunate for her, because it could well have gone in. The save just took it onto the bar. Oh, and the goalkeeper is required to receiving treatment after making that save. Looks like she may be winded. Oh, 
I don't know many players who would attempt that sort of effort, but Farrell Williams is definitely one of them. Yeah, great technical ability. Always has had great technical ability. And in unpredictable conditions, you never know, do you? Yeah, there's also that experienced head part of it as well. Um, Recognising where the goalkeeper is, is it the right time to try something like that? The goalkeeper... Looks like she's going to be OK, Pauline Perra Manning. It's the first real save she's had to make. You look at the amount of stoppages in play this game has had, and you look at the amount of cards, you'd think it was a very aggressive WSL match, which is actually not what we're seeing. Farrah Williams will take this corner kick. Chipped in, and Furness is frustrated with herself for not hitting the target. Good delivery this time, and obviously accurate runs, good timing of runs as well, and good contact. Uh, good contact, but not able to control it. And then perhaps the Remy Allen and Furness were going for the same ball. Yeah, and one's double the size of the other. So uh, <laughs> maybe if they look back at that, they should have left it for the, for the, the taller player. This is promising from uh, Reading. Handball is claimed and it's gone Arsenal's way. Brooke Chaplin and the referee's going to pull this back because it wasn't quite taken at the right place. It has been one of those games, hasn't it? Very stop-start. Yeah, really stop-start. Um, frustrating for players, always, these games. They want to get a rhythm in the game, and it's really frustrating when these things are happening. So Redding is setting themselves up now in a really high press, trying to push the ball back in uh, Arsenal's defensive third, and they've managed to do it. Williams can't quite take it under her spell. Here's van der Donk. Via. Mitchell couldn't quite get there. Space opening up for Reading. Not on the far side, though, where there was some. Yeah, still, they're not, not capable of using it. And, and whether that's, you know, how players are being asked to play in this shape and structure, or whether that's just an individual player decision. But again, lots of area, lots of space in the wide area to use then and keep that attack going. Arsenal unbeaten in four against Reading. Last time Royals did win was in November 2017, the Continental Cup group stage. Farrah Williams scored twice that day. It's been an interesting progression for Kelly Chambers over the last few years. Obviously, when I joined the club many years ago now. Oh, the efforts. Well, it was... It was ambitious, to say the least, from Chaplin. She's clearly got the confidence to... Yeah, worth a try. ...take it on. But when I joined the club, obviously, they were, they were in the lower levels of, of women's football. And, and when you look at the progression they've had over the last six, seven years, it's been phenomenal. And I think Kelly's done a fantastic job, but she's very ambitious and she wants to take the club even further forward. So a top four spot right now is what they want, but she, she wants even more in the next five years. It's not a bad ball from Mead. Too much weight on it towards Meadabar. Early run in the half. It was a decent save from uh, Grace Maloney. Managed to palm it out of danger. Good decisions because lurking behind her was one of the uh, Arsenal forward line. Kim Little picks it up. Here's McCabe. Via, that's a lovely touch. Yeah, it's a great first touch from Via, then taking it straight into space. Tash Harding just getting a bit caught diving in early. And the third card of the game, the first one to Reading, and I don't think that Tasha Harding's going to have any complaints about that. That was all about the touch, though, wasn't it, from 
Catherine Via. Great awareness, obviously aware of the space that she could use on that first touch and, and good contact on the ball, and then she's off. You know, the, the good thing about this is she, she picks up speed as soon as she takes that touch, which causes Tash Harden a lot of problems. So a free kick and a decent position for Arsenal. Needs going to leave it for McCabe. It's short, but it's going to be a corner kick to the Gunners. Yeah, seemed to be uh, targeting Van der Donk then, just at the front post area. Not quite getting there. Reached the hour mark here. It's Arsenal who still have this slender lead. They've had chances to add to it. Reading have had theirs as well. And a couple of shouts for a penalty in the first half as well. Meads corner, it's met by Quinn, over the bar. Good delivery, pinpoint delivery again there from Beth Mead. Obviously targeting the biggest player on the pitch, who is uh, Louise Quinn, Republic of Ireland international player. She'll be disappointed with that, actually. She's very good in these instances, usually ends up scoring goals when the balls are that good into her. I think she is near or if not exactly six foot Louise Quinn which is very unusual for the women's game of course it's a real asset in, in both boxes mm. especially for the national team when they have a fantastic long thrower <laughs> yep it's a good routine they have good partnership they have here's Vaya who's impressed on her first start yeah more involved in the game Vaya now second half Getting on the ball a lot more. Obviously an experienced player, played in different uh, leagues throughout, throughout the world, played out in the US for Seattle, played in her homeland. And obviously now she's uh, in the UK. Yep, arrived just a few weeks ago from Montpellier. That's another good turn. Just stopped in her tracks by Harding. The referee has rightly, though, pulled it back. Jade Moore this time was trying to stop her. Again, what we don't see is rolling and diving, uh, you know, which you know, I think is a positive in the women's game, but it's definitely a free kick. But that puts the, bone, the burden on the referee then to give a decision, even though the player hasn't gone down, which is a uh, uh, bone of contention in the men's game. Here is Mead, floated in, and Bloodworth should have done better there. She made a really good run. I'm surprised Arsenal aren't making the most of these opportunities. Fantastic delivery again there, coming in from, from Beth Mead. And good time to the run, obviously taking her eye off it at the, the last point of contact there. Disappointing from Reading, though, because they're allowing these opportunities to, to happen. They're not dealing with players as they're making those runs in towards the six-yard area. You're absolutely right, though, Jane. You pointed out in the first half that Beth Mead's deliveries have been right on the money. I can't think of a dud one today. Well, there's always awards at the end of the year for goal scorer, etc. You know, player of the year, deliveries of the year. She has <laughs> mine. She's been fantastic. From both the dead ball and yeah, she's a great run asset. as well. Great asset to have. More words being exchanged, this time between the referee and Jade Moore. Oh, looks like uh, an issue with a, perhaps a contact lens with Jade Moore. <laughs> One of the Arsenal players having a very good look at that. Unfortunately, another stoppage in play. <laughs> God, those older players on the pitch won't be enjoying this game right now, the stop-start element. You start seizing up, mm. and then you've got to get go again, full pace. Hazard of the job, though, isn't it? The old contact lenses. Yeah, it's obviously beneficial <laughs> if you can see. <laughs> uh. You just hope that it hasn't disappeared somewhere. <laughs> Time for players to get together now and, and just, you know, chat amongst themselves, see if they can solve some issues on the pitch right now. For Reading, can they retain the ball better? 
can they make the most of these opportunities when they're getting into that final third? In a couple of minutes' time, the two, two o'clock kickoffs today will be getting underway. Chelsea against Birmingham and Manchester City against Brighton. We'll keep you up to date on any score there. Harding's throw. That's well taken down. And good strength as well by Chaplin. They use Farrow Williams really effectively on their throws as the decoy runner. And, and it's actually not just one player that gets drawn towards us, more than one, so it creates a lot of space from where she's come from. It's a decent looking ball, but not a great touch by Moore. Oh, that's a heavy challenge by Harding. She did get the ball, but absolutely barged meat as well. It's usually what we see in a, in a red jersey, to be fair, when she has the Welsh dragon on her chest. Back <laughs> like that, which, um, look, I'd sit here and I'd go, it's fair, but it's tough. Um, Beth, Beth Mead, Mead might think differently. <laughs> <laughs> Robust from Harding, we should say. Yeah. I'm amazed sometimes how she doesn't get hurt herself, if I'm honest. But uh, the pace that she comes up at people causes them a problem because she comes at you very quickly. She's extremely fast. And that's frightening. <laughs> Beth Mead does get fouled an awful lot, doesn't she? I suppose that's the, the position you play if you're a wide player and a tricky one and one who makes things happen. It does tend to happen, doesn't it? But yeah, it seems to be every game she gets clattered. Well, she has a good ability of moving the ball on her first touch into space, but obviously as that's happening, defenders are uh, getting sold with body movement, etc., and having to bring her down because of it. McCabe. Sloppy in possession at times, Arsenal. You know, you can see Emma Mitchell acknowledging it. It's a mistake from her then. The cave looks like it's just going to be a chat for now. Because she was booked earlier on, McCabe, for persistent fouling. Oh, it'll be really disappointing in this game if actually a player ends up getting sent off. Because it's really not that game, is it? No, <laughs> definitely not. It was actually just a really good turn, wasn't it, by, by Bruton to draw Again, the foul. Again, she's seeing space, she's using it effectively. Um, but yeah, McCabe's got to be careful. Be dived in, she's dived in. She's had her last warning. I just wonder if they might be tempted to take her off, although there's not too many options now that Van der Donk is on for Arsenal. Here is Mead, allowed to carry it forward. Here's Van der Donk, haven't seen too much of her since she's come on. That's a decent delivery. Away by Allen. Alfaro Williams. I know I'd agree we haven't seen much of her, but I actually think it's because of how the both teams are setting up and the both midfields are nullifying each other. You could say the same, but you know, Kim Little um, and others in, in that area, Reading or Arsenal players, there's, there's a lot of bodies in and around those spaces. It's hard to get on the ball. Little. Commits the foul. You could see she was just showing signs of frustration, Kim Little. I think she was urging the player that she was passing to to come to the ball, not wait for it, I think. Well, we're seeing Kim taking up uh, probably a deeper position than what people would know of her in the past, you know, being more of a 10 higher up on the pitch. And she's taken up a deeper midfielder role today, which, you know, she can definitely do. She has the ability to do that, but it does take something away from a game. She has a great ability to, to drag defenders out of spaces and then obviously Miedemar has that eye to see the space that's then created and if the people on the ball are aware of it, it creates good goal scoring opportunities for Arsenal.
<laughs> there's some there's some late niggles. That's that's what I would call that a niggle. It's a it's a little kick out. There's not too much in it. It's kind of a frustrating one from the player involved. Disappointed with how they pressed originally. It's mistimed. Well, 20 minutes just over to go. And the stand-in boss, Aaron Dantino, not sitting too, or standing, I should say, too comfortably. The coloured pen is away. That's proper old school, isn't it, the coloured pen? <laughs> that was it. when I was a kid. I haven't seen one of them in ages. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and buy one now. <laughs> <laughs> when you see him at the stationery store, <laughs> shopping for coloured pens. They haven't managed to increase their lead, but uh, holding steady at the moment. Not being vintage Arsenal by any stretch. No, but it's important that they come away from the three points. So for him regarding decisions now, well, it's which way do you go to keep going as it is because actually Redden aren't causing you a problem but you change something to try and create some more goal scoring opportunities to ensure you get the three points it's Mead offside we're getting word that the Reading coaching staff are not happy about some of the persistent fouling I don't know who that <laughs> um, the assistant coach there is, is calling. It's Phil Cousins. Calling for help. Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, it, yeah I'm not sure. Um, there have been niggles throughout the game. I think from both both teams, though, I wouldn't say, you know, more so one team than the other. Nothing excessively dangerous. Just maybe badly timed 1v1 situations. more dispossessed by van der Donk and a bit of space here for Vaya. Now these are opportunities that they've been really dangerous in in previous games. That's a lovely pass from Vaya to Mead. They've got to be careful here. McCabe is behind Kim Little. Redding did really well then to get enough bodies behind the ball to slow Arsenal down to ensure that that counter-attack didn't, didn't come to uh, a chance on goal. Manchester City already in the lead against Brighton and Hove Albion, and I'll give you a guess who scored for Manchester City. Centre forward. <laughs> Are we thinking Nikita Paris? Bang on, yes. Penalty, Nikita Paris, 13 now for the season, three behind Miedemar. WSL's top scorer of all time, Nikita Paris, on fire. It's making for a really interesting competition this year. You know, looking at the, the next few months, it's going to be really interesting. People can't afford to lose points. You know, that top three. And I'd still put Chelsea in this bracket because I think they're hungry. And if the likes of Arsenal or Man City do drop points, then they'll be there ready to, to climb that table. Can't see them dropping too many points now, the last part of the season, Chelsea. No, they're on a roll, aren't they? Not the and way the individuals are performing. I think that, you know, they're at their, their top levels right now. The test might be when they resume their Champions League campaign. Really good tie against PSG coming up. And what Emma Hayes does have is a fantastic squad. And if they, there's, a, you know, there's a player on that bench who's not starting, they're going to be desperate to start. So the competition levels within that environment must be huge. There's another niggly foul from Beth Mead and another yellow card is forthcoming. Be interesting to speak to players after this game to find out if there were many verbal things going on as they were running around to have that many niggles in a, in a WSR game. That may have been retribution, perhaps, on Harding. Yeah, maybe she called the Meg. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if she did, then she deserved that. <laughs> Frankly, I'd have taken a booking. No, 1v1s have been poor in, in for both teams at times. You've got players just diving in, desperate to try and win the ball, but are actually doing it very poorly. Quinn nods it away. It's Pacheco trying to force her way through. She's got a hold of the shirt. 
Good strength by Leah Williamson then, under a lot of pressure, not just from one, one red in play, but two or three. Got her body in the way, make sure she protected the ball effectively. She's been busy, the referee. <laughs> And a donk. <laughs> Another foul. Wasn't allowed to get away. Oh, another booking. It's becoming um, an unfortunate trend in the game, isn't it, right now, this game? I mean. Well, that foul in isolation wasn't a yellow card, was it? I suspect that the referee, again, has uh, given it on the totting up procedure. And actually, in the end, that was that didn't look like was such a bad the, challenge. Was it for the kick in the ball away? Actually, that may have, yes, I think you're right. Yeah, because I didn't see too much in the challenge. The reaction. We did have our foot raised, but, you know, our studs were facing the floor. Looked like the reaction, didn't it? Yeah. And perhaps a, a word uttered while she kicked the ball away. Mitchell. Couldn't find Via. Looks like Via switched over to that far side. Yeah, what we've seen in the last few minutes from, from Arsenal is Kim is Kim Little is dropping into deeper areas to try and get on the ball more. Look, we see her now, she's just going behind Leah Williamson to be a pass option, to try and dictate play. And I think they need her to do it. Yeah, she's shown signs of frustration, Kim Little. Furness. Here's Mead. Goes early, a couple of options Great over decision. on that far side. Here's Miedemar. Goes over the challenge of Bartrip, and Ooh, the referee shakes her head. Seen those given in the past. I think Miedemar would agree with you. The game is very narrow. So many of those players in central areas. I think Beth Mead's the only one outside the centre circle. And look, how much, and look how much time Beth Mead has here. Still going Mead. Oh, what a miss. Was it a miss or was it a good tackle? Kim Little with a really good run. I expected her to absolutely bury that really good work from Beth Mead. And actually, yes, I think she was just put off enough. Good sliding tackle, is it, from Pacheco? Good time tackle as well, because you're right, Kim Kim would have slotted that home without that pressure. Again, great run down the flank by Beth Mead and good delivery. Mead's delivery, Furness with the header away. It's a loose touch by McCabe. Look at the game on an individual basis right now, and I think every single player on that pitch I've seen perform better, whether it's you know how they're receiving the ball, how they're retaining the ball, how they're pressing, I've actually seen them play better. Uh, the only person you might say differently is actually Beth Mead. I think her levels have been really good today. It's what, what we've expected from her. This is much better from Arsenal. Lovely sweeping move. Van der Donk goes down, and it's a penalty. Is that being given because of everything else that's gone on in the game so far, do you think? The little niggles? When we see the replay now, we'll, we'll, we'll see if, uh, if it should have been given. The Redden players are obviously going to contest it, but they do, you know, with their innocent faces, don't think there was any contact there. Jade Moore is fighting her corner alongside Joe Potter the captain this afternoon, and Moore gets a yellow card for this challenge on van der Donk. Yeah, 
It seems like she got she tripped up over the ball. Ooh. It's really interesting to watch the last five minutes in play that Miedema tackle that wasn't given was probably more uh, a free kick on the edge of the box or a penalty, but more when you'd be given. But look, I'm, I'm not here to, to... Here's Kim Little. Strokes it home. Carbon composed, as you like, from Kim Little. And that should be that for Arsenal. A controversial penalty decision has surely seen them take maximum points. Don't like questioning an official's decision, but it does feel like um, that could have been given because of all the other instances in the game, which shouldn't necessarily be the way to go. But it didn't seem like one of the strongest penalty decisions. Great technique here, obviously. Read the way Grace Maloney's gone and slotted it into one of the corners. So Kim Little back on the score sheet. Her first goal since returning from that broken leg. Her fifth in the WSL and eighth in all competitions. But that will be talked about, I'm sure, post-match with the Reading coaching staff. We'll try and get some reaction from Kelly Chambers and we'll hear that on the Women's Football Show tonight, 11 o'clock, BBC One with Ailey Barber. And uh, I'm sure the unbiased opinion of Jordan Nobbs, although we'll have to wait and see for that one. Well, 10 minutes left to go in this game. Let's see if Reading can claw their way back into it. Do they change person personnel? Do they change, change system? I, look, I think it's worth them trying. And I think the levels of Arsenal have been lower than what we've expected. It's been an opportunity to come and front them up and go after them. It's a mistake in the Arsenal back line. And the long ranger, just a few inches over the bar. But that's really what they've been restricted to. Reading. It's been a professional, patient performance from Arsenal. I think that's the word I'd use today, patient. And Chelsea have taken the lead against Birmingham City. Erin Cuthbert fresh from her double against Arsenal last time out on the score sheet once again. She is really coming of age this season. Oh, absolutely. Just in love time for the World Cup. Play. <laughs> absolutely love watching her play. Oh, explosive, and she's aggressive, but in a good way, aggressive. She's a competitor, she wants to win everything. I'd imagine if you watch her training, she wants to win, whether it's a 3v3 or an 11v11, she wants to win. <laughs> yes. You see that in her movements on the pitch, you know, she's desperate to get to the ball in front of anybody else. Really good find there from Emma Hayes, and obviously really good, talented young player to step on the pitch for Scotland in the World Cup, hopefully. Referee Lucy Oliver might have some. Uh, Is it more to do with the arm around her? You know, when you watch it again, Jade Moore's got her arm around her. Here. Is it more to do with that? Because I don't actually see the. If you look at leg contact, it doesn't seem to be too much going on from the angle we have. It could be the arm movement. It looks like she's actually pulling her back. Some gaps opening up here. Beth Mead up against Potter. Arsenal throw. There's no love loss on this pitch right now. There's some re strong tackles, you know, a little, not afters, I don't think it's afters, but just um, people holding their bodies in certain positions to ensure somebody walks into them. Those things. <laughs> <laughs> and we understand Brooke Chaplin was also booked for dissent after that penalty decision. But you know, I think a lot of that comes from this, the game being scrappy with so many stops in it. Like I said earlier, players on that pitch right now get frustrated. Don't enjoy those types of games where it's stop-start all the time. So that's uh, seven red cards in total. That's phenomenal. Three to Arsenal and four for Reading. Yeah, no, it's very unusual in the women's game, isn't it? You'd be thinking there's studs up tackles, there's really, you know, uh, late challenges, do dodgy ta challenges, naughty challenges. You know, we haven't seen one. Not perhaps the circumstances that uh, Raquel Honyu Dottier will have wanted to come on for to make her debut, the Icelandic striker on for Jade Moore, who's, I think, struggling still with her contact lens. So Honyu Dottier makes her bow for Reading after signing earlier in the week, actually, from the Swedish top flight. It'll be very interesting to see what she can bring. 
Yeah, it looks like she slotted into one of the diamond positions in the midfield, but we know her as a centre forward. Um, seems like she's going to fulfil that right side of the diamond position right now. Hopefully in the coming weeks we'll see a bit more of her. Interesting how they scouted her. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, Reading obviously have to dip into a different market than the top two, three. When you look at any of the Scandinavian uh, national team players, they're, they're strong, very strong individuals, um, really good development programs. They've had there for probably around 20 years now or longer. So, and they've had professional environments, maybe not from the pain perspective, as in professional teams all through the league, but professional environment in how they coach and how they set the standards for players. And, you know, they do develop a heck of a lot of top level players. They might not be the world class ones. They're, they're really top five, six players in the world, but they're just below that really uh, useful players in any professional league. <laughs> she just about managed to keep that in, Harry Manning. She hasn't had much to do, actually, in terms of uh, goalkeeping, Perry Manning. Maybe she just wanted to <laughs> give herself a bit of a challenge. No, she made the great decision earlier from that Farrah Williams uh, long-range shot from a wide area and obviously hurt herself in the process of saving that. But you're right, uh, not much to do for her today throughout the 87 minutes so far. Much more to do for the official, for the <laughs> referee, much more. She's had a busy day. I think uh, if she had eyes in the back of her head, it would have helped her today. I think there, there may have been a, a lot of instances going on in the pitch that uh, you may not be fully aware of. It'll be very interesting to hear from the management of both teams following this game. Neither team being able to get composed possession within the second half so far. An awkward one for Potter. Van der Donk gets there. Now here's Little, Mead. Not found by Little. The frustration creeping into a lot of these players' games today. Another sub for Reading, and we are going to see the Chelsea Loney Jade Bailey. Uh, Brooke Chaplin making way in the final few minutes. You might see some positional changes now, because Jade Bailey is, is more of a centre-back, stroke deep-line midfielder. Um, obviously, Brooke's just come off from, from the front line. Here's Alan. Harding picks it up. And when you dot it, can't quite keep it in. You will see Jade Bailey just filling in that base of diamond position for Redding right now. And I, I believe Rachel Furness has gone up top. Oh, that's a lovely yeah, play is, yeah. by Honu Dottier. Not a bad cross either. Here's Farrah Williams. Just put off by Williamson. Little glimpse though of the new signing and what she can produce. Yeah, good turn. Good awareness here to, to realise where the space is to use and quick feet too. Challenged by Kim Little. She does not look happy this afternoon, does she? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very frustrated. And, you know, part of it will be frustrated in her own game, making errors, which she, she won't be, you know, she doesn't do very often, to be fair to her. Levels are always pretty high. Um, and probably frustration with the elements of the game, the stoppages in play, and decisions that others are making at times, too. Williams, 
Well, it's well struck, but well off target. Good dip on the ball, just unfortunately for her, obviously the angle, uh, not quite right. Four minutes added on at the end of this second half. You see Rachel Furness on the ball here. Um, obviously, she's played a, a, in a deeper midfield role for most of the game, but for the last five minutes, obviously, Reading trying to get the ball up, be a bit more direct, get the ball up, up to the front line as soon as they possibly can. Here's Williams, deflected. It's going to be a corner kick to Reading. And that was all from Pauline Perramanning, who tried to get things going quickly for Arsenal, when she didn't really need to. And the Reading corner came to nothing. Very scrappy game today. I think that that last 20 seconds kind of sum, sums up the game in many ways. It certainly does. Scrappy. And that's a good <laughs> bit of play once again from the new signing. Draws the foul, wins the free kick. They've got a good physical presence on set plays now, Redden, especially with the new player they've just brought in, the Icelandic international. Potter. Oof, wasn't far away at all. You know she's got a very good left foot, Joe Potter. Just whistled wide of the post. Point in delivery there from the goalkeeper. I wonder if the uh, you know Arsenal obviously had the wind at their backs in the first half. Yeah, you're right. It's probably causing them a bit of a problem now. It's probably just as strong. Oh, it's Hanu Dottia! Oh, that would have been a dream debut. Fell to her nicely. Didn't quite catch it with enough power. No, positive to see her in the right right position though. So glimpses for Kelly Chambers to, to look forward to the next few games now with her team. She's certainly seeing a lot of the ball. It's Van der Donk. Meads made the run. It's a lovely pass by Van der Donk. Pinpoint. Mead didn't have to break stride. I think maybe she wasn't expecting it to fall to her. It was a great dummy movement from Remy, Remy Allen, which has obviously set up the opportunity for uh, the Icelandic international. And uh, yeah, she looked back and think that, that was one that she maybe could have taken another touch on. So a substitution and a debut for young teenager Melissa Phyllis, who is coming on the final 30 seconds here. Another youngster blooded for Arsenal on for Viat. Under 17 international. She's appeared twice in the Continental Cup, this though her league debut. She's a tall, strong looking player for a youngster. And that's a good touch as well. McCabe! Oh! Spectacular! And within seconds of coming on, Melissa Phyllis has an assist to her name. Great first touch. <laughs> McCabe wraps up what's been a very low quality game in style. That's hard on Reading. Yeah, tough, tough for Reading, but what a fantastic strike this is. 
Great first touch awareness of the youngster coming on and fantastic strike with her left foot. Laces through the ball, lots of power behind it and just out of the reach of Grace Maloney. Well, that was quite stunning. A stunning end to the game for Arsenal, who were far from their best, but somehow managed to come out of this game with a 3-0 win over Reading, who battled bravely, but Arsenal just a touch more clinical and perhaps a touch more fortunate as well in terms of the refereeing decisions, Jane Ludlow. Yeah, I think, you know, you look at the whole game and obviously the weather conditions caused a bit of a problem for each team in both halves. Um, but great result for Arsenal, another three points on the table. Um, poor result for Reading, they would have wanted to compete today. When you look at the lineup for Arsenal, missing so many key players for them, I think it was an opportunity they've missed. Um, but having said that, some new players have joined them recently and there's some nice glimpses to see that they, poten they have potential going forward. So an absolutely vital win for Arsenal, particularly because Manchester City are currently leading against Brighton and uh, Chelsea also leading at the moment in their game against Birmingham. It is all set up after this international break to be quite the exciting title race, Jane. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's the best thing for the sport. I think to have a competitive title race near in the end of the season is great. I think you have some big teams now wanting to lift that trophy in the coming months. And, you know, Chelsea, for me, are the informed team. Probably not going to drop many points in the next few games. And, and it's up to Arsenal and Man City to make sure that they don't catch them. Thank you very much, Jane. So, full time at Adams Park, a huge win for Arsenal. Back to winning ways in the Women's Super League. Full time at Reading nil, Arsenal three. And make sure you tune in tonight to the Women's Football Show, which starts at 11 o'clock on BBC One, an hour later at midnight in Scotland. That's it from us then. Arsenal back to winning ways on a day when Vivian Miedemar broke the WSL goal scoring record. Thank you very much for tuning in this afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs>